Well, on the very same day, on page 11, was this disturbing story. Nation of gamblers. Australian and New Zealand gamblers are the worst in the world, betting more money online than those of any other country. The story didn't grab the nation the way the so-called Pauline Hanson picks did, but it still caused quite a stir. There are calls to ban online gambling, with Australian punters betting more money over the internet than anywhere in the world. New Zealand and Australia, the world leaders in online gambling. Even the ABC joined in. That makes Australians and New Zealanders the worst online gamblers in the world, spending about $430 online every month. Isn't that incredible? Certainly is, Nick. Incredible. And totally wrong. The story might demonstrate that Aussie journalists are among the worst in the world at reporting statistics, but not much else. The figures in the Sunday Telly story came from this report. Internet gambling. Prevalence, patterns, problems and policy options. By a couple of Canadian professors who've conducted... An online, self-administered survey of 12,521 adults from 105 countries. Sounds impressive. But how many of those 12,500 respondents live in Australia and New Zealand? Answer, just 59. And what percentage of those 59 admitted to gambling online? 32.2%. In other words, the figures are based on the responses of only 19 Australian and New Zealand online gamblers. As one of the authors of the report told Media Watch, This means that all the results with respect to individual gambling behaviour are extremely tentative and probably not even worth reporting. The result that gave the Sunday telly its sensational story was one of the dodgiest of all. Comparative net monthly gambling expenditure, US dollars. Internet gamblers mean... Australia and New Zealand. $300.32. 300 US dollars is indeed about 430 Aussie dollars. And it is the highest mean or average internet gambling spend of any region except Africa, according to the survey. But have a look at this figure right next door, which the Sunday Telegraph ignored. Internet gamblers median. Australia and New Zealand. Nine dollars. Or about 12 Australian dollars per month, the lowest figure on the list. Mean? Median? $430 a month in one column, 12 in another. What's going on? We need a lesson in simple statistics. Suppose you're an average Australian householder with a total net worth of half a million dollars, and you find yourself in a room with eight other averagely wealthy Australians and Bill Gates, who is currently estimated to be worth around 50 billion Aussie dollars. The mean or average worth of the people in the room would be their total wealth divided by 10, or fractionally over $5 billion. A figure that doesn't tell you anything about Bill Gates' actual wealth or anyone else's either. To get the median worth of the people in the room, you list each individual's wealth in order. The median figure is halfway down the list. In this case, a bit over half a million dollars. When there are one or two people among a small sample that are way out of the typical range, the median figure is much more useful. So, was there an individual who stood out from the pack among the Aussie and Kiwi participants in the gambling survey? Yes, there was. Professor Williams told us that the huge difference between the average and median figures in the table was due to a single individual with a very large expenditure. And he also confirmed that the median expenditures reported in our study are the best way of comparing regions, and they show Oz NZ to have the lowest expenditures. But that wouldn't have made much of a story, would it? Sunday Telegraph editor Neil Breen now acknowledges that the report's authors told us the results should be interpreted with caution. Caution, I acknowledge, we did not exercise as well as we might. Neil Breen had plenty more to say. Check out his response on our website. But it does seem that caution is in short supply at the Sunday telly these days.